Hello, and thank you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to welcome you to this webinar organized by Innovise on how the city of Scottsdale leveraged sensor data to streamline water distribution system analytics with Innovise's new cloud platform. My name is Christina Novo, and I am technical editor of Smart Water Magazine. Based in Portland, Oregon, Innovise is a global leader in water infrastructure software. For 35 years, Innovise has been building innovative software for the water industry and is trusted by approximately 3,000 customers worldwide, including utility companies in many of the most populous cities across five continents, a majority of ENR's top design firms and leading environmental and engineering consultancies. Innovise's modeling, simulation, and predictive analysis solutions enable more cost-effective and sustainably designed water distribution networks, water collection systems, water and wastewater treatment plants, and flood protection systems. Further, Innovise's solutions centralize infrastructure as visibility to optimize capital and operational expenses. Earlier this year, Autodesk announced the acquisition of Innovise, a move that creates a clear path to a more sustainable and digitized water industry. In today's webinar, Innovise will show how utility can transform its hydraulic model planning into a real-time operational solution. We will also hear about a case study focused on the city of Scottsdale's use of Info360 Insight and Info Water Pro as an enterprise platform to increase efficiencies in managing their water distribution network. We have two speakers. First, John Crochet, Regional Sales Manager at Innovise, will present the company's software solutions. In the second part of the webinar, Nathan Gertz, Product Manager, will present the Scottsdale case study. At the end, there will be a question and answer session. You can send us your questions using the Q&A function in Zoom. Please identify yourself and your organization of affiliation when you send your questions. Feel free to send them through the session as they occur to you and we will address them at the end. The webinar should last about one hour in total. We would also like you to share your thoughts with us on social media using the hashtag Keep Innovising. And now I would like to introduce the first speaker, John Crochet has more than eight years of experience in water distribution, sanitary sewer and environmental engineering with a specific focus on computer-based modeling applications. He received a BA in civil engineering from Clemson University before working for mid-sized engineering consulting firms in Charleston and Denver. He joined Innovise in 2019 as a systems engineer before moving into his role as regional sales manager for the Mountain West region. As a team leader, he is responsible for the promotion, organization, and delivery of industry-leading GIS-integrated smart city software solution. He will be talking about Innovice's software solutions. Welcome, John, and the floor is yours. Before we get started, I, I skipped an intro slide, but I do want to thank the city of Scottsdale real quick. Uh, I'm the account manager for Scottsdale, so really just want to thank everyone that was involved from the city, um, all the way from the engineering team. I got to work with Scott Anderson the most, um, to of course the IT folks, uh, Sam, Sam Adams and Jason Brelsford team uh, that really want to say thank you to the entire city of Scottsdale for uh, you know working with them on this project and also allowing us to feature them with this presentation. So. I um, want to start off with that and also want to just uh, uh, mention that we are not showing any of Scottsdale's data specifically. Um, so Nathan will be going through the software and some screenshots, but just want to uh, preface that, that we're not showing any uh, quote unquote live data or skated data directly from their system. Um, but thanks everyone for joining today. Again, we'll be talking about really our new uh, cloud platform and Info360, our new enterprise platform with a focus on our uh, first application in Info360 Insight. Um, but for those of you who are not familiar with Innovise as a company, 
Uh, this is just a quick slide, a little bit about us. As Christina mentioned, we are a global company. Um, so we're in you know, the top uh, six of, of the seven major continents. Uh, we are a global company with offices in the UK and Australia. Uh, Nathan and I are both here in the United States, as Christina mentioned, so we help support our client base here in the United States. Um, but the most important thing, as Christina mentioned, is, is maybe the little uh, you know, emblem that's added under our logo now in Autodesk. Um, so we are a part of Autodesk now, personally. Uh, I used a lot of Autodesk products in my consulting days, uh, and I'm honestly thrilled about uh, what I think is a kind of a final home for Innovise here. Um, and I think it's a great fit considering our product lines don't really overlap. And I think it's a really a, a good opportunity for Autodesk and Innovise to kind of build out, you know, that portfolio all the way from uh, the design phase the, through the construction phase as well. And uh, so just real quick, uh, for those of you who are not terribly familiar with Innovise, um, this is just a brief overview of the uh, product lines, I guess, or solutions that we offer. Um, so a lot of folks are probably mostly familiar with these first two in terms of our hydraulic modeling solutions. So those are the uh, InfoSwim users of the world, the ICM users of the world, the InfoWorks WS and InfoWater Pro users of the world. Um, so I think most folks on the call are probably pretty familiar with our uh, modeling solutions that, of course, have been used for decades. Um, but what, what we're really focused on with our new uh, cloud-based platform, and that is Info360, is, is some of the, I would say, more uh, live data, more uh, robust uh, solutions in terms of you know, the data that we're bringing in to actually run a simulation or run an analysis. So um, with asset management and operational analytics, there's a lot of uh, you know, work order data, a lot of SCADA data. Uh, a lot of meter data. There's a lot of data sources that we're collecting um, for our asset management and operational analytics solutions. Um, so that's where we decided at Innovise, it was time to kind of transform uh, really our product line. Um, so at the highest level, I, I guess for the folks on the call, um, the point I want to kind of drive across here uh, in terms of the entire platform is we, we want to have an enterprise platform that is really uh, open to anybody your, your utility to use. Um, so if it's an operator, if it's an engineer, if it's a manager, uh, if it's someone in the field, uh, if it's your consultant, for example, we really want to be able to house all of that live data um, that I was just referencing in a, uh, in a platform that is able to process it efficiently, um, and it, it's able to do analytics on it. And then in turn, you can bring any of those data points and any of those analytics into our desktop modeling solutions as well. Um, so that's really the idea with our, our cloud platform. Uh, it's an online platform. So again, it, it's really meant to be used by anybody in, in your organization. Um, but really the benefit from, from, from my standpoint or from an engineering standpoint is you can bring in you know, any of those data points that are being processed um, so you're, you're processing the raw data, in this case, SCADA data with Insight. Um, you can bring that into the model and utilize it for uh, planning and engineering. So that's, that's really where we got this title from in terms of bridging the gap. Um, you know, a lot of our customers, it's, it's been a uh, linear relationship, I would say, where, you know, live data or something comes in through your SCADA system. You have a, an operations team that might utilize that um, on a daily basis, but you know, it doesn't really get opened up and utilized uh, throughout the entire organization. Um, so that's really, really what we're trying to get at with this platform. It's an enterprise platform um, that opens up the live analytics and really, uh, you know, all the data that you're collecting as a utility. And this is uh, just a, another visual kind of showing uh, what, what I just went through there, but it, just to kind of recap again, um, Info360 is the online platform. Um, so Info360 is the platform and it, there will be different applications. Uh, the application we're focused on today is called Info360 Insight. Um, so that is an operational analytics application that uh, basically hooks up to your distribution system, SCADA system, uh, any meter data, any of that live data that's being collected on your distribution system. That's really what we're gonna focus on today. Um, I'm not going to focus on some of the other, other applications of this platform, but there is, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more from Innovise in terms of uh, Info360 Asset. So not many people have heard of that uh, application yet. 
Um, but that's really the next application of this platform that's our asset management application for our Info360 platform. And then uh, real quick, uh, just to talk about some key features with Info360 Insight specifically. Um, so again, we're talking about one application of the Info360 platform, um, but Info360 Insight is, uh, again, the, the really distribution system uh, uh, application that hooks up to your SCADA system, hooks up to uh, you know, consumption data, um, it can hook up to really any live data source that's being collected on your distribution system. Uh, and some of the benefits listed here in terms of uh, Info360 Insight, um, it, you know, really a lot of folks have a SCADA system and SCADA software that's associated with that. Um, so that's one, one kind of clear uh, uh, differentiator here that I want to kind of hit on is, is we are really doing a lot of analytics and processing of that data. Um, so we, we store your data in, in certain time intervals so that we can do a lot of uh, really cool analytics that, that Nathan's going to talk about in terms of water loss um, and, and like break detections and stuff like that. So that's where, you know, when we when we store your data in a very clean uh, time series format, we, we can start to perform a lot of different analytics and build different dashboards uh, that really, you know, we can look at the performance of the system and track the performance of the system over time. Um, there's a lot of different analytical tools. I mentioned like a mass, you know, we, we basically break out each pressure zone into a mass balance equation. And then that way we can build on it with different analytics from water loss to, uh, again, break and leak detections and things like that. Um, one thing I do want to hit on real quick is, is the hydraulic model integration. Um, so for those of y'all that are InfoWater Pro or InfoWater users, um, that's one of the main benefits of this platform as well is, you know, again, we're, we're not bringing in raw data into our hydraulic models, um, we're bringing in process data. So we can bring in our diameter curves, um, pump curves, you know, any of those uh, data points that you need to calibrate or keep your model up to date. Those are all things that can be incorporated into Info360 Insight that you can bring them into your model as well. Um, and I won't focus too much on the bottom left because I wanna give Nathan the opportunity to, to highlight those in the software as well. Um, but really, at the, at the highest level, uh, the platform does offer the opportunity to uh, really open it up for your operations folks as well. Um, so there is a new tool called the Incident Management Tool um, that's really uh, exactly as it sounds, an incident management tool where if an asset uh, goes offline or you have a break or a leak, um, you can you know, look at different scenarios or different, uh, different uh, ways to address the problem. Um, using the hydraulic engine that's within the Info360 platform. Um, so Nathan will touch a little bit on that and, and within the platform and how it's being used at Scottsdale. Um, but with that, I do want to turn it over to Nathan now so that he can talk about a little bit about how we're using this platform over at the city of Scottsdale. Well, I guess I'll give it to you, Christina, first. I'm sorry to, to give an introduction for Nathan. Thank you for presenting the Info360 platform and introducing this first application, Info360 Insight, and uh, its key features and, and benefits. If you have any questions for John, please forward them using the Q&A function in Zoom, and he can address them during the question period at the end of the webinar. We're now going to turn to Nathan Gertz, a product manager at Innovice. Nathan Gertz is the Product Manager of Water Distribution Solutions at Innovice, helping guide development to lead the market of hydraulic modeling software for water utilities. Nathan has worked for Innovice for six years, helping from project implementation and support to pre-sale support and solution scoping. As John has mentioned, he's going to be talking about a case study in the city of Scottsdale in Arizona. Welcome, Nathan. Please go ahead. There we go. So uh, my screen should be should be up now. So um, yeah, thank you for for passing that along. So I'm going to uh, talk through a little bit of um, our implementation with Scottsdale and talk about some of the some of the features that they are choosing to use within Info 360. So just a really quick high level um, about City of Scottsdale, some statistics. Um, well, it's a 
a suburb within the Phoenix metro area. So it kind of kind of looks like this within our, our map dashboard. Um, there's a number of statistics. I won't bother reading all of these off, but one, two numbers I do want to draw attention to is that it is a lot of elevation. So there's 2,000 600 feet of elevation variation within here. So there's a lot of hills up here that results in a large number of pressure zones, um, 149 different pressure zones throughout this system that then ends up necessitating a large number of control valves and pumps. Um, so that's uh, their system at a high level. And some of their objectives um, coming from that is that they, they want to have uh, dashboards where they could manage the pressure to review pressures throughout the system, get a quick um, understanding of pressure variations, um, have alerts on demand um, of, of pressure exceedance um, instances. In addition, um, their, their system is, is broken into four separate um, uh, zone or areas. And so we are doing mass balance, um, uh, which basically just sums up the volume being used by each isolatable area. And I'll, I'll, I'll highlight which areas we can isolate um, since this is not a, a full DMA system like, like some of our other um, global users. So uh, mass balance analytics I'll be getting into. Um, also with a number of their pumps, um, they are gonna be using some of our pump efficiency analytics and, and reporting. So I'll, I'll show that. And then finally, one of the big drivers of this project was model integration. So um, because we are being able to tap into their SCADA data, we can connect that to the model to really streamline model updates, even use the model for operational understanding. So those are some high level objectives that I'll be stepping through. Um, as far as the actual project, um, what that project looks like, you know, we start off with a project uh, kickoff to outline the different timelines and deliverables that we will be working on with them. Um, we define um, define the system. So we, we actually deploy uh, a data ingester is what we call it. Um, so Info360 itself is completely a cloud solution hosted um, on it, you know, by, you know, in the cloud by Innovize. And so we have a software component on site um, that pulls their SCADA data in real time and uploads it to our cloud. Um, that will, I'll, I'll come back to that in the next slide. Um, so we, we import the full sensors and system definitions. We also upload the model to get the web maps set up. So that's um, the step two. Um, step three is we actually deploy. So we configure all of the different sensors in their system. We define the pressure zones or DMAs, depending on what you have. And we associate each of those sensors or processed sensors um, with model elements. Um, and then finally, um, the actual build phase, and this is where we're still at with Scottsdale, is, is building custom um, workspaces, uh, continuing to, to, to roll out the analytics for them. And throughout this process, the user has full access to log in, access the site, um, play around, customize their own dashboards, give us feedback on the dashboards that we're building with them. And so we're, we're kind of at this uh, interactive build phase with them. Um, so that's just a quick look at, at what the project looks like. Um, one detail, this was, this was the, the one piece where, where we have to um, work directly with, with um, Scottsdale IT and, and you know, uh, ensure security compliance. I know that security is, is a really high uh, it's, it's a, a growing concern among many utilities with you know, recent breaches, uh, but not of our software, but just globally. Um, so what, what happens is, is Innovize deploys a data ingester on premise. Um, it gets read-only access credentials to the SCADA historian. And in many cases, we don't actually connect to a historian. In many cases, um, there will be actually like a SQL server or some mirror of the historian where the data is replicated. And then we pull from that with read-only access. And then we use um, full secure AWS encryption from, from that on-site location into Info360 where it, it remains encrypted and locked behind um, uh, you know, uh, a number of, of secure uh, credentials. Um, and so this, this was a, a key process of that starting phase. Um, and, and that, that is that piece. And um, yes, yeah, so that's a, a quick note on that. 
Um, so then finally, once once we have the site set up, we, we deploy different dashboards. So this is just a, a quick GIF showing um, that we have four different dashboards um, highlighting different different uh, aspects of the data. So this is just one where it gives a really high level overview of one of those four zones. Um, so you can kind of see like a welcome dashboard and then zoom into um, one of these different region uh, dashboards. Um, I'll show some of that in the software, um, but that's just a quick look at their site. Um, so now I'm going to step out from PowerPoint for a minute and show actual Info360. And this is um, not showing Scottsdale live uh, data. This is a separate site, one of one of our demo sites. Um, but this is just a quick quick walkthrough um, to orient you with what Info360 um, look and feel is like. So when a user logs in um, on a web browser, um, they will come to the dashboard. And this is where users can, can see the web map. They can get a summary of latest alerts, um, the alerts by category, um, new alerts versus high priority alerts versus incidents. Um, and you can step to, to recent workspaces. Um, you can go to uh, a, a full web map if you wanted to, to look at the actual web assets of different um, uh, isolation valve and, and different things like that. Um, and you can also navigate to different workspaces. And this is where um, users can customize any number of different workspaces. We'll, we can help configure a few to, um, to meet you know, the, the objectives of your system. So I'm going to click on this one to go into one that is set up for like a pressure um, system pressure management, which is kind of one of the, one of the kind of key objectives for Scottsdale. Um, so really, you know, just like just like a, a, a typical web dashboard, um, you, we can set up web maps, um, graphics, displays. Um, these are fully customizable, so you don't need us to have programmers that that program and then it's etched in stone and users can't customize it. Um, any user can take these. You can duplicate one of one that we've already created, um, and then you can zoom in on the data um, and and in general. You know, once once this is up, you know, sifting through the data is really fast. We can, you know, zoom it at different time scales, load in quite a bit of data. So these are, are different pressure sensors. I can highlight the different pressure sensors. I can overlay um, uh, different uh, alert thresholds or moving averages or other analytics. Um, if I step down, we can also look at um, gauge charts. So in some cases, operators rather than looking at um, a history, they may want to just see, you know, at a glance, the the snapshot of, of how things are, you know, what what's happening at right now. One for each each pressure zone, for example. So this shows the latest value, and then a a, a peak at the latest twenty four hours. We can also look at, you know, a long history. This is three years of pressure data overlaid with a moving average, so you can kind of see the instantaneous results compared to that moving trend. Um, and here, here's another example where um, you can see just, uh, I think this is a, just a 15 minute pressure sensor and you can sift along. And as we get to a certain event, the pressure drops, drops down to around 45 PSI in this zone. Um, so one of the nice things having all of the data accessible is that when that pressure drops, you can easily um, lay out these workspaces and have access to other sensors. So where the pressure drops, um, you know, a pressure drop by itself, we're not really sure exactly what that means. But one of the things that we are doing is calculating out the water usage um, each hour of the day for each zone. Um, and so uh, here is a, a look at that water usage um, for that same pressure zone where this pressure sensor came from. And so Corresponding, um, this is on March 23rd, where that pressure drops. We see a corresponding large jump in water usage on March 23rd, um, and it's actually happening during the middle of the night. So if I zoom in here, this is right at um, it starts right at you know 2 a.m. Um, kind of anomalously high water usage, and so this would be a pretty high indication that there would be a pipe pipe burst. And indeed, this data actually came from a system where we did have a pipe burst that was was uh, recorded. Um, so I'll show where we can step to alerts in just a second. Um, 
but we can also build patterns um, here. Uh, so this is um, summer um, 2018 water usage, where you can see a typical diurnal pattern, but then this is from a different D DMA where there's a lot of irrigation at night. Um, so here the pattern actually has most of its flow in the middle of the night, whereas the lowest flows are in the middle of the day. So different zones can vary um, and seasons can vary. And so pulling out those pattern analytics can be helpful and we can actually then reference that. So in, in terms of our alert thresholds. So I'm gonna step over real quick to um, uh, discard my changes and take a look at, at alerts. Um, so here, um, a user can can sift through different alerts that have occurred. So these are different um, descriptive names, um, the priority on which these alerts occurred, occurred, and we can also customize the alert criteria. So um, sometimes uh, alert criteria it, it can be a little bit of a of an ongoing evolution to narrow in on those the right criteria so you don't get too many false positives or false negatives, and so. Um, we, we leave those thresholds open to editing by admin users. So if I go into one of these, um, uh, this is a pipe burst detection example, just a, a simple example. And the user can um, add and subtract different pieces of logic. And so here we have two different um, thresholds that can be triggered um, using the water usage that's calculated as well as the pressure, and we can also wrap that pressure sensor with a moving average. So we could then throw out a simple instantaneous spike in pressure. That might not be you know, something you want to alert on, but maybe you want the moving average. So then if there is a, a persistent drop in pressure, that could be an indication of a more robust indicator of, of a break. And we can combine these with and or um, statements and so on. And we can reference virtual sensors so you can embed analytics and so on. But one of the good things about these alerts, um, if I step to one of these, is that um, the alert is tracked. And so we can see different history of this alert where it's happened um, in March, in um, it happened again in May. Um, and rather than just ha simply having instances where an alert is triggered and then it's something you forget about, we can actually turn an alert into an actual incident. And so an incident is something where it's an event that is being managed. And so this alert is associated with an active incident. So I can jump to that incident here. And so incidents are managed um, at a separate you know, module within Info360 Insight. And so incidents are where operators and other staff can have a common platform to view the timeline of, of what is happening with this incident. So you can see the trigger of, of the initial alert, um, you can you can dispatch um, uh, field inspections um, where uh, workers can can upload um, attachments of images or uh, associate work orders to third party CMMS systems, and uh, most importantly, we can also do um, simulation impact assessments. So if I click on this impact assessment, I'm actually going to step to a different one. Um, users can have a simple web interface for common workflows to, to simulate hydraulically what would happen under this, under this incident. So in this case, um, uh, this was a low flow um, and low pressure alert that was triggered. And so, um, and so within the UI, we, we have it set up so that non-modelers can set up uh, basic, uh, a basic handful of parameters to, to trigger a simulation. Um, and so this in this case, we have this symbol where the pipe break was established. Um, so that's that's the pipe break. It's on a certain asset, which is uh, 12708. Um, and in this case, you can you can define the, the maximum break flow. And we just insert an emitter coefficient on that pipe um, from this time of day, which is at 7 a.m. We run it, um, you know, the user can specify the time period from that time. Um, we take that time, we bring in bring in SCADA data, update tank levels, initial conditions, and so on, uh, pump settings. Um, and then we simulate from 12 hours with that emitter coefficient up to that threshold of flow. And then we simulate um, how many customers would be affected um, by, that, by that condition. In this case, user can define that as um, customers are affected if they go below 30 PSI for at least 30 minutes. Both of those are, are kind of user configurable um, with, a, with a default setting. 
So in this case, if I zoom out, um, we have uh, 2,200 customers, um, and you can see a heat map of where those customers are affected, um, which uh, sums up to 648 days um, of of you know total you know loss of service hours, which would be you know pretty detrimental um, to the utility because I chose a pretty large water main for this this impact assessment. Um, fortunately, in this case, because it's on a large uh, main, um, we are you know pretty likely to be able to detect it um, using SCADA. Um, if you don't have that, you know probably a customer might even <laughs> report it within within an hour if it's that magnitude of a pipe break. I can, we can actually also um, view the view the pipe break within an, the animation viewer. So you can, um, if I click play, you can kind of see a heat map of where and when we have affected customers. So. Um, this zone starts to get some supply during this break, but then um, eventually the storage up in these upper pressure zones um, start to run out and we'll see affected customers up there. Um, so that starts to happen in these later hours. So, so the, the impact ev actually evolves over time. And in reality, um, a utility will be able to start to close off valves um, before, the, before we see all 2000 customers impacted. So, with that, um, you can actually create new scenarios and it will detect which valves can be used to isolate that pipe. Um, and you can then close those valves. You can specify a time. Um, it will detect in our asset database if valves are, are already flagged as inoperable or if they're already closed or open. We use that. If a user flags that it's inoperable in the UI, then it will then trace downstream from there and find the remaining valves that are required to isolate it. But then um, you can simulate um, from various isolation events. And so in this case, um, you can see um, once we close off those valves, then we only have 86 customers, which are the customers in that one specific um, closed off pounded area from the valves. And you can download the CSV, get those um, GIS coordinates, um, the customer addresses, and any other information that you choose to include in our project uh, shapefile upload that's web mapped. Um, so that's a little bit on that, um, on that process. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think that is uh, some of the main, um, main walkthrough of, of the software. I'm going to step back to PowerPoint to, to finish off. So some of the analytics that we are setting up for Scottsdale um, include a mass balance uh, for the water usage. Um, and so this is where we just report the water consumption in an hourly time series um, for each zone that we can isolate or the total system and, and the total system. Um, and, it, and we can, if we have billing data, we can also include the non-revenue water. Um, if it's hourly, we could do a non-revenue time series. Otherwise, it would just be uh, monthly, just depending on whatever time scale you have for that billing data. And the requirements are flow meters at all main boundaries between the zones and tank levels um, with their storage parameters. Um, and so just a quick on the methodology. So like if you have a zone where we have um, a tank level going up and down and we have pump stations flowing in and pump stations flowing out um, uh, from the UI, we can um, just drag in those corresponding sensors into our mass balance uh, network. Um, we you know do simple you know, simple mathematics, summing up the inflow volumes. Um, for the flow, we integrate the volume over time based on the time steps uh, that, that you have for, for your actual flow data. And the outcome is that diurnal time series. Um, this, is, this is kind of a, um, a pretty foundational thing that you, you may already have if, if, your, if your system has DMAs, but um, I know in North America where, where Scottsdale is, uh, not many have this. Um, or not many have the, the, the pairing down uh, at this kind of scale. Um, and so where can, we, where can we set this up? Well, here's just a really simple schematic where we have a pump station here where we have measured flow rate pressure status, um, a pump station going out. We have one tank over here where we have measured level. Um, but here we have a PRV going between two zones and uh, depending on the country where you're in, you may not have any sensors at this PRV. It may just be um, a simple mechanical PRV. Um, and so in that case, we can't isolate each pressure zone, but we can 
um, do a mass balance on the, the aggregate of those two pressure zones. And so that's one of the things we're going through with Scottsdale. Um, they have 149 different pressure zones, but they have a lot of instances where there are PRVs where we can't isolate. So we are doing mass balance where we uh, lump together zones. And there's a lot of benefits where we can do then leakage reporting, burst analysis on those uh, lumped together zones. And then we can help them identify prioritized locations where um, adding a flow sensor can then um, you know, divide up your analytics and get you a lot more value out of what you have. Um, and so the, the workflow is, um, you know, this is the UI. Um, don't need to go into too many details because um, we, we can help set this up during our implementation, but there's a UI where it's pretty seamless to just drag in the sensors for the inflows, outflows, and storage and set that up. And then it is generating that time series um, at like a virtual sensor in real time. Um, a step two uh, outcome of that is that we can do pattern detection. So um, here we aggregate out, uh, together the, the patterns um, from, that, from that data. This is a chart looking at um, water usage um, where we overlay the, the current values, which are orange against a moving average of the past two weeks in dark gray and the high and the low range from those last two weeks. Um, and we can do pattern detection really on any sensor that you have, um, but where it, it is of particular value is on the, the water usage. So, um, so that would use the mass balance um, if we have that available. Um, and there's a, a pretty simple UI. Um, so we can set this up for your mass balance, but you can, users can you know, customize these different patterns um, pretty easily using the, the interface. Um, so another uh, key value is, is looking at pump efficiency. Um, and so what we can do is we can take the, the, the pump sensor data um, based on what's, what's available and we can display um, real time points of where the pump is operating along its, its curve. Um, and then the outcome is that uh, the um, operations and maintenance team can then prioritize pumps with the highest deviation from the manufacturer's curve. Um, and so you can see which pumps are um, performing the, the least efficiently, essentially. So the requirements for us to do this on a given pump station, we require uh, suction pressure, discharge pressure, the total flow rate, um, the status a status sensor on each pump, and ideally the pump manufacturer's curve. Um, so just a quick look at what that looks like. So like if this is a pump um, station um, with the flow directions, we usually have a, a suction pressure sensor around there, a discharge pressure sensor. We need the total flow rate. Um, usually in SCADA, there might be graphs like this that we can generate. Um, and we also need, um, in this case, like if there's five different pumps, um, we would need then the status sensor for each pump um, so that we can then use these statuses to filter out the total um, dis, uh, head difference and flow rates and then filter out the times when each individual pump is operating by itself so we can isolate individual pump performance. Um, so we don't need pressure or flow on each individual pump. We just need it for the full station, but we do need then the status on each individual pump. Um, and then um, the outcome is that we can then kind of create a dashboard uh, plotting those um, the head versus flow um, for each pump compared to the head head difference curve. And so just at a high level view, you can kind of see these three pumps are operating, you know, pretty much right on the manufacturer's curve. They're doing pretty well. This pump is operating off that curve. Um, so this is kind of just a really simple, uh, <laughs> you know, poor versus healthy grading um, that I did, but. Um, uh, the methodology is we take those pressure sensors in and out. We take the pressure difference. Um, for our U.S. customers, they're usually in PSI, so we convert it to feet using a simple 2.31 factor. Uh, and then we filter out flow rate time series for each individual pump. And then we plot the scatter of those instantaneous values uh, for flow versus head. And then we can compare it with the manufacturer's curve. And um, we can then uh, potentially take it a step further um, and turn that into a KPI for each pump. And so what that looks like um, in a schematic um, look is for each individual, each pump, each um, time step that the pump is running alone, we calculate the head difference. And then we look up the total flow from the head curve, from the, the manufacturer's curve um, for that amount of head. So that's value 
you know, X. And then we compare that to the actual measured flow. And then we can come up with an efficiency coefficient. And so like, for instance, for this point, that might be, for example, 91.3% um, that the, the um, of the hypothetical manufacturer's flow for that head difference that the, the pump is actually delivering. And so that 91.3%, that's one value. We could really generate a time series of many different values as that pump is operating at different points in time, come up with a moving average time series. Um, and then you can compare that across pumps and you can see which pumps are the farthest off the curve versus others. Um, all right, and we can also do break impact assessment. I showed a little bit of this in the software, but ultimately once we have your model connected to SCADA, we can set up those, those dashboards. Um, and the requirements of that is we really just need an up-to-date hydraulic model of the system. Um, and having the SCADA integrated as, as a key step in getting the model up-to-date. Um, and then we also need the customer location points um, as well as the isolation valve locations. Um, and for InfoWater Pro users, um, we don't need those valves to be in the model. We can just use GIS points and then we associate it with the nearest, pi the nearest pipe um, and then we close that corresponding pipe. Um, and so this was a this is a little look at that um, at that workflow for for users. I kind of already showed that in the software. So I'm going to skip past that in the interest of time. I'm, I'm noticing that we have uh, 12 minutes left. So then the final piece is integrating the hydraulic model, which was um, kind of a key driver for this um, for for Scottsdale. And so the flow of data goes both ways. So um, we can take your InfoWater Pro model and we can publish it to Info360. Um, we can use that to generate the web map of model objects. We can also incorporate the customer and valves. We also can use the model um, for your designated scenario to do easy simulation management, uh, or incident, incident management simulations. Um, but we can also take that data from Info360, pulling real-time SCADA. Um, we can you know, pre-process that SCADA um, to, to kind of clean it up. And then we can bring that back to the model for on-demand initial conditions. Um, we can you know, take that mass balance water usage profiles, um, create those patterns that I showed earlier, and bring those directly into the model um, for the process demands. And then there's also then a gap analysis dashboard so that once you choose to run a, a SCADA run for any event, like let's say we want to run the model for yesterday, you just input that date um, run the model, and then you'll get a dashboard for how your model compares um, against um, the SCADA data for that date time, um, in, incorporating initial conditions, the demands, and in upcoming, um, upcoming feature development, we're looking to bring over all of the pump control time series and so on. Um, so this is just a, a simple look at InfoWater Pro. Um, for that, that model we were looking at in, in the web. We, we now have this icon to upload those different web layers um, to the cloud version, incorporating uh, the, the valve status, the valve state, the customer elevation points, and so on. And um, here is our live data adapter tool where you can then jump to a dashboard so that a user can um, get a quick um, range of statistics for how well the model is comparing against SCADA. You can um, customize color categories for how the model's comparing. Um, this example is not a well calibrated model, um, but it's just an example. Um, so this graph shows the difference between model and measurement um, in terms of flow. And then you can also drill into individual um, graphs. Um, and it's all an, an interactive dashboard. So you can um, sift through, pick you know, which, which ones you want to compare against. Um, it's a floating window, so you can put this on a separate monitor while you're looking at your model um, and so on. So we're we're doing a lot of work right now in InfoWater to really streamline the calibration of models now that you have um, Info360 SCADA data. And that has been kind of a, a key um, a key workflow uh, that that our, our users get get hung up on is is ease of calibration because it is a it, it can be a challenging process. Um, so what are the benefits of, you know, improving that calibration process and actually keeping a water model current? Um, we have one of our users, we did a webinar on a, a year ago, um, where they're actually doing bi-weekly model uh, validation against SCADA. So they're actually keeping their model um, validated to SCADA um, on a regular basis. So anytime operations 
asks the model a certain question, they have confidence that their model is up to date. Um, and so how do we do that? Well, um, you have to update the model uh, facilities from GIS, allocate demand spatially, um, bring in those demand diurnal curves, um, update your pump curves, um, update the controls from SCADA, and then actually do the calibration and you know, uh, you know, employ you know user you know, modeling expertise to to know what parameters need to be changed. This is what is needed to be done to keep the model current. These two functionalities are are embedded into the InfoWater Pro workflows using you know GIS integration. But the rest of these are skated integration. Typically, um, uh, takes a while with uh, conventional approaches, but with Info360 that's streamlined. And, um, and then some of the benefits of having that integration is um, with Info360 plus InfoWaters, you can respond quickly, confidently to performance changes. You can provide insights to operational responses, um, supporting decisions with evidence um, rather than just um, kind of anecdotal, uh, you know, <laughs> anecdotal um, evidence. Um, you can also do uh, water quality assessments once your model is, is reliable. Um, you can understand system behavior between gaps and sensors. So you can't deploy a sensor at every single um, location that could be cost prohibitive. But once your model matches those sensors that you do have, you can then trust the model in between the sensors with some more confidence. And really keeping the model up to date on a regular basis really can reduce the upfront costs on master plan. So this is money you often are needing to spend anyways in the long run. So keeping the model up to date in the current time and shaving off that time really helps you benefit with all these other things in between. Um, and so that is uh, just a high level benefit. So I think now uh, we're going to hand it over to questions. Um, so yeah, great time to uh, submit your questions if you haven't already. Thank you very much for presenting to us uh, what Info360 looks and, fe and feels like with the different examples of the workspaces. We have seen uses such as calculating mass balances for water usage, looking into pump efficiencies, pattern detection, assessing the impact of incidents and hydraulic model integration. Um, I think we will, now we will just open the floor for questions. Again, please send them using the Q&A function in Zoom. We already have quite a few questions there. So uh, we'll just um, do a very brief pause and we'll start the question period. Um, okay, well, yeah, I think I can, I can jump into to some of these questions and, and um, and I'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just hop into these. You want um, to choose uh, which questions you want to go for? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'll, I'll start okay. with- or, um, or would you like me to to um, just uh, present them to you and uh, you can choose uh, which ones? Um, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I can I can pick out questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll introduce it, read the question and then give it a quick answer. Um, John, were there any that you uh, noticed that you want to make sure that we, we get to? Yeah, you want to call one, out? there was a really good question, actually. And I think it's a really common one about uh, the sensor data beyond SCADA sensors and the plan to deploy additional sensors. And if so, what brand and type? Um, I, I really want to touch this question because it, it, I think it's important, you know, a lot of the customers we work with, if not every customer, um, no one has the perfect sensor placement, for example. I think Nathan even mentioned that in terms of uh, defining each pressure zone for Scottsdale. So, you know, we fully understand that. And, and as Nathan mentioned, this is somewhat of an iterative process where um, there's a lot of different options. You know, you can start with one pressure zone, your, your most defined pressure zone or one that's, uh, you know, the top concern. Um, and then you can use uh, Info360 Insight to, and InfoWater Pro to even determine where to place that next sensor. Um, so we very rarely work with folks that are, you know, <laughs> just, hey, here's our, here's our sensor placement, here's our model, we're ready to go. So it's always a process and there's always, uh, you know, uh, future investments that can be made that, you know, using this data um, to kind of make those decisions. And then in, in terms of the types of sensors and brands, uh, we're really not concerned about that. We're, we're more concerned about the data uh, and where the data lives. So, is, you know, we're really concerned about where that data is being stored um, in terms of what database it's being stored on or, or what type of database. 
Um, so from a hardware standpoint, we, we really do not care. Uh, we only care that it's being collected in a, in a time series fashion. That's really uh, the only requirement uh, for Insight is that we're, you're collecting data uh, in a time series fashion so that we can consume it. I know uh, there was a, a question similar to that. Um, so yeah, just wanna uh, answer that question. It's, it, it's really uh, a process to kind of you know, build this out for your entire system. Thank you very much, John. Uh, if I may, I just, um, if you don't mind, I'll go through them. And so I'll, I'll just mention uh, who's asking the question so we can all have uh, that information as well. It might be interesting for, for the discussion. Okay. Um, so we had a question from Binaz Kabas. That's a little bit difficult for me to pronounce. Lead hydraulic engineer at Ian Inc. And he said, besides Info360 and InfoWater, what are the things a utility company needs to have in order to be able to use this service? Um, yeah, yeah, good question. Thank you, Ben, ben Oz. Um, So we, we don't actually require InfoWater or InfoWorks WS Pro. Um, we, uh, Info360 um, Insight is the specific mod module that we were presenting today. And that does require um, some sort of time series data is, is really what it uses. And we can, we can connect to uh, any number of different sets of time series data that you have. Usually uh, water network SCADA is the most common, but we do have um, upcoming, uh, a bit of upcoming functionality to support sewer um, uh, uh, collection uh, sensor data. Um, and so, yeah, just, just sensor data. And there's also other Info360 modules um, that will focus on asset management that won't require SCADA. As far as the model, um, we can we can inter um, integrate directly with InfoWater Pro or InfoWorks WS Pro. But if you have another, uh, another type of software, um, we could certainly look at using a simple EPA net model upload, um, you know, for that incident manager um, workflow. Uh, and we can work with you on that. Okay, thank you very much, Nathan. Um, we also, we have a question from Athrin Gerber, civil engineer, system planning at Taxon Water. Do you typically use sensor data beyond the SCADA sensors? Is the plan to deploy additional sensors? If so, what brand or type? Yeah, and that, that was the one I just uh, answered for, for Catherine at Tucson. Okay. And uh, the That's one thing cool. I'll add is, is we do, uh, I mentioned earlier, we, we can use, any live data really that's being collected on your distribution system. I'd say the next most common one but, uh, beyond SCADA data is your consumption data. Um, so if you have any like AMI readings that you're collecting in the field, uh, a lot of customers want to utilize that data. Um, in, in our case, we can use it for that water loss calculation. Um, so typically we use minimum nightly flow. This is getting a little deep into the weeds, but we can use uh, the actual consumption data to get a little bit more granular and accurate in terms of uh, you know that baseline for our water loss calculation. Um, so yeah, anything you want to add to that one, Nathan? No, nope, yep, that's that's good. good. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So we move on to the next one. This one is from Elena Bronix from Bohannon Houston Inc. Where are the pres pressure sensors located, and how were those locations determined? On the mass balance, are those main meters from wells and or from customer meters? Yeah, well, um, we we often see uh, you know pressures um, within uh, so so within within a, a a zone or a DMA, there may be a pressure at, at certain high elevation points within a zone. Um, usually, always at tanks and um, often downstream of. Of pump stations, but we can we can really use uh, your existing um, sensor locations. We may um, we may uh, offer some recommendations on additional sensor uh, locations that that would be beneficial. But we usually um, work with work with what you have um, and and help you understand the the um, I don't know any any caveats with that. As far as the mass balance, um, we often uh, are just using whatever flow sensors that we have between zones. So if you have it on valves. Um, pump stations, that's great. Yeah, usually at wells where they're, they're pumping out of the ground into the zone. Um, those are important to have. 
Uh, and then as for customer meters, those are optional. Those are um, great to have. If, if we do have the customer meters, then we can do the mass balance where we're actually directly calculating out the non-revenue water um, from the zone. But if not, we did then just get an aggregated total water usage that's going into the zone and, and, um, and not being passed to another zone. And so that's really the, the total revenue and non-revenue water coming out of the zone. Okay, thank you very much, Nathan. So the next question would be from Sean Dent, VP at Carollo Engineers. Can you show overlaying a GIS file so you can see the pipes as a background layer in the map view? Um, yes, yeah, uh, uh, I, I didn't, um, I showed briefly the, the map and, and yes, we, we do upload, uh, the, the pipe location. So you, you can see the, the pipes um, and, other, and other assets that, that you choose um, to provide us. We're also um, working on uh, being able to embed any kind of web map service on the background. Um, currently, currently, we store the files ourselves in our cloud um, and, and you can toggle between those, um, those different locations. But yes, the, the pipes can be, can be displayed at views. Perfect. So the next one is from Russell De Castro, a hydraulic modeler. And it is, so does that mean any valve that you close is actually closing in the hydraulic model while the results get back to the Info360 platform? Um, yeah, I assume this is referring to that incident manager um, module in the web interface that I was looking at. And so, yeah, what happens uh, in that case is we uh, we close the, the uh, the user can can close valves, and it those valves are closed in that um, single instance of the model. Um, so we simulate with all those valves closed, but it does not um, tie back to our asset database of the valves um, or back to the actual hydraulic model. Um, it's just a, a temporary closing of the valve for that one for that one analysis. Okay, thank you very much. Next one from Susan Nipper, engineer at OHM Advisors. Can the software deal with adjusting timestamps? For example, if you have two different sources of SCADA data that would be needed for mass balance, but one is recorded in standard time and one is in daylight savings time. Yes, for each of each of your sources of data, um, we we. Uh, we, we um, configure in the, the time zone that your data is coming from. And then on the back end, we store all data actually in UTC time, but the user in the web dashboard can choose what times time zone to assign for the whole system. And so um, and so that 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 is used. Um, and so that's how we that's how we can combine different time zone. And, and as far as time stamps, uh, we do some sampling of the data. So we take um, whatever interval your data is coming at, even if it's um, irregular intervals, you know, at 247 and 36 seconds and then 249, we sample it into, for example, five minute increments. So we can then store the open, high, low, close, and average values of each of those intervals. And that's how we can easily deploy analytics where all of the data is synced up. So we can do analytics on time steps in a really easy, um, accessible way. Okay. Thank you, Nathan. We're making you work a lot here with these questions. That's good. <laughs> From I'm trying to answer some of them, sorry, through typing, so. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> From Tahira Jasmine, Water and with Water Senior Engineer. Is Info360 work in independently or does it require InfoWater, InfoWorks? Um, it, it, it can certainly work independently if, if um, uh, there are yeah there are a number of use cases that don't require a hydraulic model. Um, if you want to just do you know a sensor alerting and dashboards, um, you, you can certainly do that. Okay, thank you. Another question from Carmen de Miguel, a strategic a strategic marketing manager at Schneider Electric. Any specific analytics for urban drainage catchment management? Oh, sorry. Can you repeat the question? I was expecting a yes. different question. Where He's is that? asking if there are any specific analytics for urban drainage catchment management. 
Um, not in the current release. Uh, our, our initial, you know, we released the software earlier this year, and the the current target is water distribution systems. But uh, urban catchment um, analytics for for sewer collection systems is certainly coming um, in the near term. Okay, thank you. Another question from Carlos Lopez, water engineer at Atlantica. If two or more pumps are running at the same time, you should either need an individual PIT or FIT to know if the pump is running good or not. What if one individual discharge valve is more closed than other? Um, let's see, I am not sure I understand this question. Um, Okay, we may we might skip yeah. this one, and maybe Carlos, may uh, we we ask you to please uh, rephrase it and type it back again in the Q and A box, and we'll try to come back to it later. And we'll go to another question. Um, Glauco from Brazil, working in Schneider Electric too. On the platform demonstrated, is it possible to trace contaminants in the piping? For example, high levels of chlorine. In case of incidents, is it possible for the platform to send service orders to the maintenance team via other customer software, e.g. SAP? Is the platform sold with all the features presented or can it be sold in modules? Yeah, good question. Um, so at, at the moment, um, we would we would leverage our hydraulic models to do those water quality um, simulations and tracing. Um, and so uh, and so you could um, bring your your SCADA initial conditions um, to the model to to simulate from there. Um, I know that our IW Live uh, modeling software can can run um, could, you know continuous water quality simulations to keep that traced. Um, but that that would be the workflow, um, uh, and and at the moment the water model results don't go back to the dashboards, but um, that that could be that could be configured with IDB Live. They they can be um, configured to do that. Um, as far as then uh, pushing out the software to other um, uh, service orders and maintenance teams, um, so we we are certainly working on uh, APIs to be able to exchange. Um, with with a growing number of, of of other platforms, that is certainly the intent of us being now in a cloud environment um, where we can where we can set up those APIs. Um, at the moment, we don't do that specific one, but um, that is that's definitely a a priority in our roadmap is is in, is growing those APIs to to connect with other platforms. Okay, thank you. Now Tanya Marquez sends uh, more of a comment. She says, great case. One problem we used to face is how to justify to the board the investments on such a project. Maybe you can share some ideas on that. Yeah, yeah. We, we, um, that, that, uh, one of the, one of the takeaways from Info360 is, you know, we can report non revenue water per zone. Um, and so that, that can be a, a, an indicator. Um, where where investments need to be done, or you know, acoustic surveys to locate breaks, um, but uh, we also can leverage dashboards for the pump performance to um, target uh, pump improvements. And one of the other things is that once you have a dashboard where you're tracking performance and KPIs, um, then when you do improvements, you can then also show a timeline of the actual measured. Um, performance increases. And so having these dashboards and the transparency helps you justify the projects and it also helps you get um, visualization on the actual benefits of the projects to, um, you know, to, to, to give feedback for more projects or maybe a different type of project. And so, yeah, this is a great benefit for um, board management and, and so on. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Next question is from Eric Bones. Is the data one way coming out of SCADA? Is it possible to integrate data a data DMZ? Um, at, yes, at the moment, um, right now, the, the data flow is, is purely from SCADA and, and into our, our platform. And our intent is to provide insights. Um, we, we, don't, uh, we don't provide controls back to any kind of SCADA system. And so, yeah, right now it's a one way up to our cloud and then we provide 
the staff with with insights to um, you know possibly operate things, but it is up to operators and and staff to to implement any recommendations from our software. Okay, thank you. Next question from Catherine Gerber. With sensor data, do the databases need to be combined or can you use separate time series database data from separate sources, such as one database for SCADA operational sensors and another database for additional planning sensors? And maybe a third, and she says CIS or WMMS. Yeah, I, uh, I, sorry, Nathan, I plopped an answer in there for that one. Um, yeah, it does not matter if it's in different databases or different sources. Um, that's where we're using uh, the data ingester to consolidate uh, basically different data sources, if that's the case. And actually, that's that's more commonly the case, I would say. Um, so, yeah, that's not a problem. We can pull from different databases, and that's what the ingester is for, uh, to consolidate it and then send it up to our platform in a you know very encrypted, uh, secure secure manner. Anything you want to add to that, Nathan? Yeah. And once we have our data ingester deployed on premise, um, admin users can actually use the web interface mm -hmm. to, to configure additional data sources. And so then, um, so yeah, you can actually add more databases if you have like SQL servers or, or things that are easy to connect to. And you don't, you don't even actually need our, our, our assistance to, to connect those for you. So yeah, it's pretty open. Okay, thank you both. A question from Homero Garza, Data Systems Manager at the City of Fort Worth Water. What are the costs associated with data transfer from an organization to the cloud environment? And he has a second question, what are the requirements to view the dashboards? And he also asks about licensing. Yeah, I'll take this one, Nathan. Um, so there's not really a cost associated with the data transfer. So uh, this platform is a, is a subscription-based platform. So uh, you know, even a utility has the opportunity to, to turn it on and off uh, if, if they really wanted to on an annual basis. Um, but everything's inclusive in that subscription. So everything from the data ingester to obviously uh, the data transfer, uh, all the way through the, the online platform and, and every, the dashboards itself. Um, so yeah, everything's included uh, within that subscription cost. And it's the one thing I do want to mention, and, uh, just to reiterate, it's an enterprise platform. Um, so there's no limit to the number of users. There's no limit to the number of dashboards, alerts, or anything that each user wants to set up. Um, so it's really just a, a straight subscription fee for your entire organization. Um, that's all inclusive. And then, uh, you know, as, as Nathan mentioned, it, we typically include implementation services, uh, whether that's from us or one of our consulting partners. Um, so that's, you know, kind of a, a separate custom discussion, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, but in terms of the Innovise uh, product, it's, it's just a straight subscription fee. Um, anything you want to add to that, Nathan? Yeah, uh, just that the subscription uh, varies by the number of sensors. Number so if you, yep. sorry, yeah, I thought I said if you're that. a smaller <laughs> utility, um, it's a lower subscription than if you have um, tens of thousands of sensors, for example, mm -hmm. just because of the, the the cloud costs on our end, obviously. Okay, thank you both. And we have a question from Carlos Garcia, a staff water engineer at Arcadis. You mentioned resampling data. If the interval is larger than the resample, how is the data interpolated? Is billing data also interpolated to perform mass balances? Um, yeah, the user has the option as we're configuring the sensors. Um, you can choose either no interpolation. So if there's a gap, um, if there's like a gap in data, it, you we could treat that as a null. Um, otherwise, you could say extend the last known value. So we could just keep using the last value, or you can use linear interpolation. Those are currently the options. Um, as for billing data, I am oh, okay. So this is specifically on the time step. So if you have like monthly, um, could we interpolate that um, for a daily interval? Um, I believe so, but uh, I, I I I am not sure. I, I haven't actually worked with the billing data on that, but I would I would believe so. Sorry okay. for a vague response on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Nathan. So now just uh, one uh, more general question. 
So how is Info360 Insight different than a SCADA software solution? Um, I'll start with this, Nathan. You know, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning is uh, a lot of folks have a SCADA system already, which of course comes with hardware and a lot of times software. Um, you know, those are uh, a lot of those systems have come a long way in terms of being able to do analytics. But I would say that's really the key difference with our platform is, you know, we're not looking to replace your SCADA system, of course. I think it's pretty clear that we're leveraging SCADA data. Um, so really, the, the main point of this platform is to perform uh, analytics on that data so that you can open it up for, again, all the members of your organization. Um, so, you know, typically SCADA data is, is quote unquote raw data. Um, so that's where as a, as a water focused company, um, we've taken our expertise from an engineering and modeling standpoint um, and put it, you know, in, into a platform that can be used for operations as well. Um, so it's really processing the data um, so that we can use it for operations, for management, for planning and engineering, um, really just to, to, you know, open up that, that data and, we all use the word silos a lot. I know it's very cliche, but that, that's really what we're trying to do here is kind of open things up from a, a, a live data standpoint to the entire organization. Um, anything you want to add, Nathan? Yep, yep. That's that's a good summary. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, another more general question too about security. How is Innovice ensuring that data is secure? Yeah, I, I'll take this at a high level. Um, I think you know we check a lot of the boxes because we built this uh, we built this platform platform with Amazon, so we do leverage uh, you know a lot of the data security that Amazon offers just right off the bat um, as one of kind of a, the leaders from a from a cloud services uh, data standpoint. Um, so yeah, we, we 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 you know everything is 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 encrypted. Everything. Uh, we meet a lot every technical requirement that we've come across in terms of SOC 2 requirements. Um, that's probably the most common one I've seen in the States. I know there's different IT requirements uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but the bottom line is that we work with, with major customers. Uh, I think that that's been, we stated that at the beginning in terms of our client base. So uh, everybody has different IT requirements that we understand that. Um, and I personally have been a, a part of quite a few meetings with IT folks to discuss data security. You know, like Nathan mentioned, it's it's a, it's a priority. We understand that. Um, we, we you know we've seen everything else in the news that everybody else has seen. Um, so we we are very uh, aware and very focused on data security. Um, and we have a, a cloud services data security team that is happy to meet with your IT team. Um, to discuss some of the specifics, I, I, I could our uh, our cloud IT guy could probably sit on here and run through some of this, the the specifics from a technical standpoint for about an hour. I've seen him do it before, um, but the bottom line is, you know, that 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 is a uh, 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 top of mind here at Enterprise and data security is is really the priority with this platform. Um, anything you want to add to that, Nathan? Yeah, yeah, I think I think utilities are starting to come around to to the idea that that. The cloud is actually, in many cases, more secure than than on-premise data, and we are we have a tight partnership with AW Amazon, which you know using the best-in-class web security, and we can provide technical papers on on how we how we achieve that um, for for anyone anyone interested. Okay, thank you both. Uh, another question about Info360 Insight. Uh, how does it connect to Innovice's hydraulic modeling solutions? Um, yeah, uh, so if you have desktop info, uh, desktop modeling solutions, which is um, uh, actually all there is at the moment, we we can um, we have a direct APIs uh, with the model, so the model can pull um, Info360 data to the model. You can upload the model um, to the web. And at the moment, we are um, building more and more uh, uh, modeling um, model data and model engines in the cloud to leverage to leverage cloud computing. So that is that is upcoming um, in, in the future. But um, at the moment, if you have an on-premise, you know, Info Water Pro or Infox WS Pro, um, you can bring uh, SCADA data through. Um, and that can inf inform your initial conditions as well as uh, the demand variations um, and, and control patterns. Thank you, Nathan. 
Another question is, what if my distribution network does not have expansive SCADA coverage? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, sorry, Nathan. I, I think we've uh, answered that one a couple times, but the one thing I, I want to add to what I've already mentioned is, uh, coming from wrong, Nathan, there, there's also ways you, you use the word virtual sensor. Um, so again, we understand you, you might not have a sensor in, in every single place that you need to define a zone, for example. Um, so there are ways to kind of hard enter like a baseline into the software as well, uh, or quote unquote, use a virtual sensor. Um, so again, you know, we fully understand that everybody has the hardware uh, or infrastructure to roll something like Info360 Info inside out to the entire network. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different options, whether it's virtual sensors, you know, putting a sensor in the, there in the future, um, whatever it is to kind of help, uh, you know, uh, complete that uh, initiative or journey to, to making it an entire uh, covered network, I guess, where you can leverage the, the tool for the entire network. Um, anything you want to add, Nathan? Yeah, we, we can have um, discussions with with utilities um, based on on what they have and, and what their objectives are and, and what, mm -hmm. what the data requirements are. So wherever you're at, um, but usually what we have found is that um, whoever gets Info360, it usually does help point out spots where like, like wow, if I had a flow rate um, sensor right here, I'd be able to get this additional value. So it does usually highlight um, additional places where you're, you're going to want sensors. And so it can can help help give that some of that guidance, actually. OK, thank you very much, both. Um, this has been a very interesting discussion. And um, as we I guess we're getting close to the end of the webinar, I would like to ask you a question for both of you, if you can uh, uh, both answer it. It's uh, taking into account everything that we have discussed today. How do you see uh, water management uh, 20 years from now? Wow, that's, uh, yeah. I wasn't ready for that question. Uh, you wanna go first, Nathan? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we see um, uh, definitely a, a wave in, in digital transformation among IT, groups where, um, uh, yeah, th things are just much um, becoming more cloud integrated um, and, and streamlined. And so we see uh, hydraulic modeling has typically been sitting mostly in the planning side of organizations. Um, but as it becomes cloud enabled with the right um, user interfaces, um, simulation based uh, insights can really help out the the broader organization so we we see models being brought into a more central place in into um, data integrated analytics um, to support operator operations um, easier use for for planning engineers and so um, I, I think the future is bright really being supported by a digital twin where the model rather than just being a desktop standalone copy can truly live in an in integrated environment where we can have services that integrate it with SCADA GIS um, um, and and other pieces that can keep that model up to date, accurately representing um, the current state to support um, so to support you know system diagnostics, um, forecasting, and so on. So there's there's a lot of benefits once we can overcome some of these technical hurdles that we are um, we are we're jumping you know that we are overcoming now. Um, so yeah, a bright future definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo everything Nathan said. He, he hit it kind of on the money. Um, the one comment I'll add is, you know, I, to be honest, I think our industry is is, is behind in terms of innovation. Um, you know, this is such an important industry in terms of delivering clean water, um, you know, to residents. And that's, it, it's so important. But when you look at under, other industries, uh, you know, take a, uh, a uh, warehouse, for example, a Walmart warehouse, for example, you know, everything's automated. Um, everything's, you know, very live and maybe even predictive. Um, so it's really, you know, the, the new technology, I would say, whether it's from Innovise or another vendor, um, I'm excited to kind of see the transformation that Nathan's referring to, because um, I really do think we're kind of just at the beginning, uh, kind of at the cusp of, of utilities kind of going through that digital transformation. And it's a very long journey. Um, but I, I'm really, you know, excited kind of thinking about the, the, the finished product or the future here where, uh, you know, everything is is a lot more integrated. Everything's a lot more live, a lot more automated, um, and hopefully a lot more efficient. And, you know, that's that's really the idea here is, is make everything more efficient, make everything 
uh, you know, the, uh, the highest uh, level of service possible. Um, so that's where I think leveraging technology can, can you know, definitely increase those initiatives. Um, so yeah, that, that, that'd be my answer for, for that question. Okay, thank you very much both for this answer. And uh, I think we're, we're now going to get to the end because it's uh, now almost an hour and a half since we started. It's been a, a very interesting webinar. Um, I think there might be maybe a few other questions, but uh, we we encourage those um, to those people to contact you directly um, if they wish to to further clarify anything. And um, so we'll forward those questions to to the speakers. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. We'll, we'll reach out to, I saw a couple folks that were asking uh, for like the local representative. So we'll be sure to follow up with anybody um, that left a comment like that. Perfect. Thank you very much, John. So I would just like to thank our speakers today and everyone attending the event. And I just remind you that uh, the event has been recorded. And so you will be able to watch it uh, if you want to in the website of Smart Water Magazine. Thanks for having us, Christina. We really appreciate it. And, and thank you for everybody who attended. Um, I know, know we went over, so thank you for everyone's time. We appreciate it.